Imagine two observers, one seated in the center of a speeding train car, and another standing on the platform as the train races by. As the center of the car passes the observer on the platform, he sees two bolts of lightning strike the car, one on the front and one on the rear. The flashes of light from each strike reach him at the same time, so he concludes that the bolts were simultaneous, since he knows that the light from both strikes traveled the same distance to his eyes at the same speed, the speed of light. He also predicts that his friend on the train will notice the front strike before the rear strike, because from his perspective on the platform, the train is moving to meet the flash at the front and moving away from the flash at the rear. But what does the passenger see? As her friend on the platform predicted, the passenger does notice the flash from the front before the flash from the rear. But her conclusion is very different. As Einstein showed, the speed of the flashes as measured in the reference frame of the train must also be the speed of light. So because each light pulse travels the same distance from each end of the train to the passenger, she can only conclude one thing. If she sees the front strike first, it actually happened first. Whose interpretation is correct? The observer on the platform, who claims that the strikes happened simultaneously, or the observer on the train, who claims that the front strike happened before the rear strike. Einstein tells us that both are correct within their own frame of reference. This is a fundamental result of special relativity. From different reference frames, there can never be agreement on the simultaneity of events. This can be explained in a logical and intuitive way if we have a deeper understanding of time with a concept of why we have a past and uncertain future. When we look down into the atoms, we find there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms. All we have is part charge or fractions of charge. And this is logical. If what we see and feel as the passage of time is formed by a process of energy exchange that is relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus of the atom. We have the spontaneous absorption and emission of light in the form of photon energy forming the ever-changing world of our everyday life with the movement of positive and negative charge with the flow of electromagnetic fields. This represents an emergent process with the future unfolding with each photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. In our everyday life we measure this process as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the light. Each one of us has an emergent uncertain future that will be relative to our position and the energy and momentum of our actions. Within such a process it is impossible to say that two distinct events happened at the same time if those events are separated in space. This is because the future is continuously unfolding relative to the energy and momentum of each observer's frame of reference. The reason why it is energy and momentum is because momentum is frame dependent, meaning it is always within a reference frame. In this example, the train represents a reference frame with momentum, forming a vector in the direction it is traveling. The passenger on the train is within this frame of reference and will see and feel the future unfold relative to its energy and momentum. If our eyes were more sensitive to the different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum of light, we would be able to see that everything is radiating light. Even the observer watching the train passing by is radiating light, and light has momentum. Therefore, he has his own reference frame with his own unique view of the universe. 
each individual observer is in the center of their own reference frame, in the moment of now, at the forefront of the creative process. Our universe is made up of an infinite number of reference frames, with the electrical potential of each reference frame relative to the energy or actions of the object forming the future potential. This process uses the holographic principle in the form of positive and negative charge forming a dynamic two-dimensional boundary condition. Charge is an innate part of all matter. Whenever objects touch, it is charge that makes contact. And when the bonds between the atoms form and break, there is an exchange of photon energy with the movement of charge. Therefore, we can have a universal process with the spontaneous absorption and emission of photon energy forming the ever-changing world of our everyday life. The uncertainty of everyday life is represented at the smallest scale of this process by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Within such a process, it is impossible to assign a unique time and position to any event, because everything is relative to everything else. Within a process of continuous energy exchange, or what I like to call continuous creation, with energy and mass being emergent properties that form the uncertainty of everyday life, as part of an emergent process, energy slows the rate the time flows, forming the time dilation of Einstein's relativity, with the curvature of space-time representing a geometrical reason for gravity as part of one universal process. This can all be based on just one equation. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared is the most famous equation in physics, but could this equation give us an objective understanding of the universe? All we have to do is place the Lorentz contraction of space and time between the energy and mass. Therefore, the greater the energy, the greater the contraction of space, and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this, and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space and time, formed by a process of continuous creation, or continuous energy exchange. The C2 in the equation represents light radiating out in all directions at a constant speed, forming a sphere of electromagnetic radiation from its radius, forming a square of probability. This is the same probability we have with any future event, because the process forms the flow of time itself, photon by photon. The brackets represent the boundary condition of the reference frame formed by the energy, and the infinity symbol represents an infinite number of reference frames that make up our universe. In this way, we link the time dilation of Einstein's theories on relativity with a deeper understanding of quantum mechanics to give us an objective understanding of our universe that fits in with the reality of our everyday life. I will place links here that explains this in greater detail. Thanks for watching. Please sub and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.